Well, after a rocky start to the game, um, we uh, our, our second unit did a, did a great job coming in in the first quarter and helped turn it around, and um, and we were able to you know s sustain a lot of that momentum, which was key. To, Rick, to you, was that second unit stretch of success in the first quarter an energy thing? Did you change anything defensively? What got you guys into it on that end of the floor and in the game? Well, <clears throat> we were getting some stops, and they just changed the tempo a little bit. Um, you know, Oklahoma City is so focused on Tyrese and um, making it hard on him, making it, make, you know, preventing him from getting shots. Um, that you know, once once he was out of the game, <laughs> you know the, the the geometry of the game changed some really at both ends, and um, and so you know our our uh, our second unit just uh, they jumped on it. You know they got the ball they got the ball off the boards. We got some deflections. You know we had had a couple of uh, three point shots go in. Doug hit one. Shep hit one. You know, TJ got to the rim a couple times, and, and the crowd got into it, so that was big. To that end about Tyrese, he did have 11 assists and passed Mark Jackson for the single-season Pacers record. I mean, you've coached him now for two and a half seasons. What have you seen from his passing growth, and what does that mean to set that franchise record? Well, he's going he's gonna to shatter that record even more next year. You know, when he doesn't miss 15 games or whatever it is, or 12 or 14 or whatever, whatever it's been. Um, Mark was a great player, and, you know, Mark was – like number, you know, top two or three all time in assists for a while, and uh, he was a real master. And and Tyrese has a lot of the same qualities. You know, he has the vision, he knows his personnel, um, he has a great sense for timing, when to deliver the ball, how to deliver it, and so, you know, that that record stood for a long time. Um, and Mark Jackson was that good a player here. Anything more you know about Sticks and his ankle as of now? Um, I don't think it was. It ended up being um, serious because he was available to go back in. Um, but we'll see. You know, you know these things are. Tomorrow morning we may be singing a different tune. To go back to Tyrese, I mean, you mentioned you know before they were putting so much attention on on keeping him from getting shots. It just seemed like he did a really good job of recognizing that. I mean, what stood out to you about how you know he saw just the passing opportunities that were available? His Tyrese Halliburton is is defined by winning, not by scoring. He's defined by what a great teammate he is and how he helps his teammates win games. You know, so um, he was patient. He was disciplined. Um, when opportunities presented themselves, you know, he hit some. He hit a couple of really big shots um, in the third quarter to give us to give us some momentum, and then and then from there, you know. We were able to finish the game off, but you know he he's he should never be defined by whether or not he's getting a certain number of points. You know he's he's a he's a guy who's a who's a master at uh, facilitating for his teammates. Uh, you guys obviously shot the three ball pretty well, especially in the first half. Just how key was that to see a bunch of different guys? I think eight out of the ten players that were part of the rotation hit a three tonight. Just how key was that to have a bunch of different guys get going that way? Yeah, I mean, three-point shooting is a is a big factor, no question about it. I mean, you know, the way the game started, I mean, they were shooting almost seventy percent for you know the first six or seven minutes, and um, we were once we were able to get some stops, um, it it resulted in downhill momentum into some really good looks, and so you know the good catch and shoot looks off of defense are the are the ones that are that everybody wants, and we and we got our fair share of those tonight. What did you, th did you see in terms of just changing a gear defensively, especially from the first quarter to the second? I mean, how did you feel like you guys seemed like you stepped up, you know, to, with a little more presence there and made it hard for them to get anything around the rim? Well, they're, they're you know, someone asked the question before the game about their offense. They, they play a unique style. Um, almost all their guys can, um, can drive it, can shoot it, and can also, you know, hit teammates, you know, with incredible passes on – on, on screen rolls to the basket, and so you got guys like you know, like Giddy um, who can who can pass the ball. Dort passes it. Um, Wiggins passes it. Uh, Williams passes it. Wallace, you know, play has played his fair share of point guard, 
and they run pick and rolls with their seven foot one center handling the ball, making wrap around, you know, passes to small guys rolling to the rim for layups. And so we didn't do a, a very good job early. We adjusted. We got more physical. We tightened the paint up, and and we did better. You went to a smaller lineup there at the end of the fourth quarter. What have you liked about that lineup with Obi Toppin and Pascal Siakam as your two bigs? Well, I like that it's an option when the other team goes small. I mean, they were they were behind 12 or 14. They went small, you know, to get in a drive, drive and kick, you know, three-point mode and, and trying to um, get to the free throw line. And, you know, to have, have big mobile um, wings like Pascal and Obi really is, is – um, a great option to have if needed. I mean, I, I like playing big as often as we can, but when they throw five guards out there, you know, that's that's a different story. And so, you know, that's that's a lineup that that helped us in that situation. TJ, first and foremost, one of your teammates, Tyrese Halberton, passed Mark Jackson for the franchise assist record tonight. I'm curious what that means to you and as a point guard, what you think of his passing ability and what it does for your team. Yeah, um, one of, if not the most elite passer I've ever played with or seen, and um, I mean I can't wrap my mind around it. He got the guy gets ten plus assists in his sleep, um, so I can't really re re relate to that. Um, I feel like it, I expend all my energy ch trying to get ten assists, and um, the guy does it at will. He's just such a willing and elite passer, and um, just makes our team so much better. Bench has been good of late again tonight, and you guys are routinely in fourth quarters are playing other team starters. What stands out to you about those stretches and what you guys have been able to do in those moments, especially in recent weeks? Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, one through five, all of our motors are elite. You know, we get up and down really well. And when we sit down and get stops, I think that takes us to another level. And tonight we did that. Um, you know, we're aware that um, we weren't as good as we should have been against Brooklyn. And... Um, you know, it's we're aware of the loss and 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 and, and everything of that in that nature. But um, to respond the way we did, um, you know, shows maturity, and we got to be ready uh, for Miami. Been an uptick in scoring these last couple of weeks. I'm curious if that's been a focus for you and your teammates. Have kind of described it as a jump shooting boost. If you kind of feel the same way or where the where it's coming from for you. <clears throat> um, really, just trying to let the game come to me. Um, I feel like when I drive, you know, a lot of teams are staying home on, um, you know, our shooters and, and bigs. So it kind of opens up the lane for me and just trying to get downhill and create a problem. And, and if that's getting to the rim or pulling up for my mid range um, and shooting the, the open three, then that's what I got to do. What, what do you feel like in particular you guys were able to turn around, you know, late first quarter, early second with that second unit? You guys were down early. I think you were you know, up 10 at some point in there? Just what flipped, do you think, in that stretch? Um, I just feel like our response, um, you know, we kind of didn't hang our heads when we were down and kind of just dug in there and on defense and, and got stops and really just, I sound like a broken record, do what we do best and that's get out and run and create pace and get the get the fans involved and, and kind of create our own energy and went from there. Which just is what required to get stops against a team like this. Obviously, they're you know without a couple of their key guys, but they still just go at you you know in waves in the rim. And we've got guys like Shet with the, with the size that they have. Yeah. What do you feel like was it most important for you guys to get done to start getting the stops that you weren't getting in the early, you know, in the early possessions? Yeah, I mean, I, they're incredibly well coached. Um, you know, I love their staff over there. They they run some really good stuff, and you know they make you work. Um, you know, if you mess up a coverage, they'll make you pay for it, and we did that a little bit early, myself included. Um, got back cut a couple of times and, um, you know, didn't send, you know, the guys up towards the ball and, you know, they got behind us. And once we made that adjustment and, and like I said, kind of dug in there on defense, um, it was just one of those things where, you know, it's a commitment thing. You know, I, I feel like our defensive principles are good enough. It's, it's about the commitment on that end to kind of turn up the energy and, um, you know, create some chaos there. What uh, impressed about some of your teammates on the bench tonight, particularly Obi? It seemed like he really stepped up tonight. I think he had 13 points, eight rebounds somewhere in that stretch. I mean, just how he's obviously been really key for you guys throughout. But I mean, how just critical was he today, in particular? Yeah, I mean, he's he's an elite player. Um, he was elite tonight, and um, 
one of, if not the reason we won the game. Um, his energy, his defense, him getting out and running, getting to the rim, shooting open threes, um, getting other others involved. I mean, he did it all. He was he was incredible. You mentioned the Miami game earlier. Obviously, now that you're past this one, you can start to think about that one. And obviously, it's really key for standings reasons. I mean, what um, you know. How big does that one kind of loom, considering what's left uh, and where you guys stand, and how close you are to them at this point, and and just what are your you know just thoughts of being and going and going into playing that team? Yeah, I mean it's obviously a big game. They're all um, they're all big um, at this point in the season where we are and standings wise. And like I said, not, we're aware of it, but you know we're not harping on it a lot and taking it one game at a time. And now that that game is is here, I mean we know the the implications of that game and. Um, not not trying to add any added pressure to ourselves. You know, we have to play every game like it's our last, and we need to bring that energy that we brought tonight and um, on both ends of the floor, and um, you know, do what we do best on offense, and and you know, just kind of dig in there, like I said on defense. And um, I think post All Star break, our 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 defense has been has been pretty solid. Um, yeah, he's up there. Um. I think, I mean, obviously I played with Kyle. I think, you know, Kyle is just also like a really good passer, a great passer, elite passer, by the way. Um, and yeah, Ty, I mean, he's young. Um, so easy for him, you know, just he got that vision and, and he, he's able to make those passes, you know, the, the simple ones and the difficult ones, um, the spectacular ones. So he, he can do, all, do, do it all. So um, super impressive. And yeah, I'm sure. I mean, it's probably going to go up and up, you know. What stood out to you about how the second unit changed the game, particularly on that first quarter, to get you guys back into it? Yeah, they played well. Um, a lot of energy. Um, TJ, Ben, Obi, um, Jalen, Doug, like they just, you know, they came in. Um, they were ready. Um, Isaiah, like just a lot of energy, playing fast. Um, they gave us a, a boost, you know, uh, something that we needed as a team. and. Again, the game's going to look different. And, and at this time of the year, you know, we just got to figure it out, find a way to win at the end of the day. You know, that's that's the name of the game. Um, do everything we can, um, and we're going to need everyone. So um, that was great, the, the energy that they brought to the game and everything. Uh, to go back to Ty, I mean, he had 10 assists tonight before he before he scored. I think he'd only taken two shots at this at that <coughs> point. And you know, Rook was just talking about just how much attention you know they were you know the Thunder were putting on him with Thornton, but also just multiple bodies so much. I mean, just what impressed you about how he read the game and saw that okay, this is a night that's about facilitating to me versus trying to get a shot. Yeah, no, I think he's good at that. You know, at that stuff. Like he he you know he knows how to read the game. He, he knows how to you know like kind of sacrifice himself to, for the, the the better of the team, um, and. Like that's you know, that's what a leader is, and and and, and he's that. So um, he can affect the game in, in a lot of ways, and than, than just scoring. So that that um, that's that's what makes him so special. So um, I think he, he did a good job, you know, putting us in position to to be successful. And you know, he, he didn't take that many shots, but um, but he did everything that he, you know he needed to do for, for in, in, you know so, so that we can get the, the win. So um, that's needed. And, and I mean, when you look at the shots for everyone, you know, it's pretty much. I like the same all around, so um, just a, that type of game. Did I mean? Did it feel like from you know that it opened things up for everybody else? I mean, did did you get the sense that man they're, they're putting so much attention on him? You know, there's an opportunity for the rest of us to take advantage. Of um, yeah, we thought so. I mean, I think that's going to be like that a lot of nights, um, and and he understands that, and and he's going to find ways to, um, you know, and we got to work also to, to to help him to get more shots, but. I think you know the way he affects the game is is, is more than just scoring, and um, and when he plays in that pace and and his vision and everything that he's able to do, like that's you know like we, we're difficult to guard. It. You've obviously been in some really big games before. This is this one coming up with Miami takes a whole different you know tone to it, just considering where it is in the standings, how close they are, what you're playing for at the six. I mean, just what. Uh, you know, what do you feel like is important for you guys to understand going into a game like this that can really determine? Yeah, I think all, all these games are like that, you know. Like, um, uh, I mean, I think since like the probably the last ten, eleven games of the season is like every single game matters, you know. And um, and I think that's the same thing. Like, um, every single game matter, every possession we got to go out, um, give everything we got, um, and. And at the end of the day, it's just about going out there and hoping. Like we gotta play basketball. We gotta be the hardest, the, the hardest playing team, 
um, and we know the energy that they're going to have, you know, um, just the, knowing the type of team that they are, like they, they're going to come in ready and we, we got to do the same. So um, it's going to be fun. We got to enjoy it. Um, and, you know, like you want to be in those situation, you know, um, I, I can tell you that, like, if if those games at this time don't don't matter for you, you know, in the season, like that's how you know, you know, you you've been on teams where like at this point of the year, people are thinking about you know like the vacation, you know. So when you've been in that situation, you know that like um, being able to play for something um, is 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 a, is a blessing in this league, and and that's just how we gotta take it. Like go out there, have fun, enjoy it, um, and and it's and it's gonna be a hard game, and and that's what you live for. insertion into the lineup there and picks up a couple of early fouls and the game didn't get off to the greatest start from a team perspective you were part of that group who helped turn it around how were you able to turn it around after the slow start uh, just intensity um, that's a super physical team and uh, I think they came out with the first punch but uh, it was important for that second unit to come out and uh, set, our, set our standards so. another major stretch in this game to start the fourth quarter Rick trusts that second unit it's an all second unit group and you guys didn't just hold your own in fact you outscored them what was the key to that stretch here early in the fourth? Uh, just playing pacer basketball, uh, moving the ball. I think the second unit did a great job of moving the ball around, as well as the first unit. But um, yeah, people like TJ and OB uh, led the way for us. And that's uh, yeah, just great playing alongside the guys who are there for one goal. So You played in big games in your career, but it's different once you're at this level and playing against pros and with the playoff chase that's on right now. What's this like in your position to be getting regular minutes, to be performing like you are, and to be in the heat of a playoff chase like this? Yeah, I'm excited. Um, excited to get that first taste of playoffs. Um, super blessed to be able to have the opportunity my rookie year, whether uh, we finish in the playoffs or in the play-in. But um, yeah, super excited. I'm super op optimistic about this group. So. Uh, I think we'll make some noise in the playoffs. So. A couple of Miami games were maybe before you were regularly playing as much as you are now, but what are your thoughts as you look towards Sunday? This is probably going to be the biggest game of the regular season. Yeah, um, their record's similar, similar to ours, and uh, I think whoever wins this game will get that sixth seed at least. And um, yeah, top to bottom, they're a great team, super disciplined. And uh, we got to be ready to go on Sunday. So uh, yeah, like you said, we didn't have the best start, but um, you know we played a good 48-minute game, um, and that's going to be very important for us going into the playoffs. Speaking of resiliency, you picked up that second foul. I know it wasn't one that you agreed with, and some frustration for you to be able to kind of put that behind you and have the night that you did. Can you kind of take us through what seemed like a little bit of a roller coaster of a night? Yeah, a little frustrating night for me. Um, really, these past two games, you know, I've been doing a much better job keeping my fouls down these past two games kind of gone up a little bit so just you know got to keep my hands back and uh you know, get the foul count back down you're having a fantastic year shooting the three the injury happens but seems like you're shooting it really well feeling comfortable again do you feel that way uh yeah yeah today was a good um i was able to get my feet under me um you know starting to finally feel better starting to feel like myself again these past three or three or four games um, so it's been good um and we'll continue to move it, uh, work even forward. Important to take care of these home games down the stretch. Last three games, you guys have had terrific fourth quarters, haven't needed a close finish, haven't put things up to chance like Rick Carlisle mm -hmm. uh, likes to say. How do you feel like you guys are closing out here lately? Uh, yeah, we got it. We call it victory formation. We are getting that as much as possible these last four games, four times. <laughs> Miami is a team that they play a lot like, I think, how you play. And Sunday will be a massive game here. Initial thoughts in that direction? Uh, just get a win. That's all that matters. <laughs> the way you said the Pacers franchise record for us tonight. What does that mean to you? How does it feel? Have you processed it? Anything? Uh, it's a really cool achievement for me. Um, you know, I think it just speaks to the high octane offense that we've been able to create here. And, um, you know, my teammates hitting shots, I think, is the biggest thing. Like, there's no such thing as assists if, I, if guys aren't making shots. So uh, I'm just blessed to play with a great group of guys and, um, you know, makes things like this easy. Do you know Mark Jackson at all? Have you ever talked to him? I don't know if we've ever spoke. I don't. I don't think we've ever spoke. No. What uh, it seemed like in particular that you knew. You usually know like teams are going to throw a whole lot of attention at you, but it seemed like it was even more than that. Obviously, you're dealing with the door out of the gate, and they're bringing obviously a lot of other bodies. I mean, did you have a sense that the night was one that you were going to try to really pass first? I guess basically look to, you know, facilitate you. Yeah. No, I thought I just came out. I came out non-aggressive, you know, and I think that that uh, once I got the ball in my hands. You know, more in the second quarter, you know, I thought we just, we avoided pick and roll a little bit more than we usually do. And 
I felt like we, we could literally score every time we put them in a pick and roll today. So, um, you know, once we did that, it kind of opened everything up offensively. We just couldn't get any stops to start the game. They were just shooting layup after layup. So once we figured that out, uh, we were able to run and, you know, do what we do. It seemed like obviously the pop was really working, particularly with Miles. Uh, basically, it seemed like you were getting two bodies every time. And just how big was that to get that spaced out as well, you know, to get, get him rolling that way and basically to show what was going to happen if they were going to put two bodies on you? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think we're the you know best pick and roll duo in the league for a reason. Like, I think they have the numbers to prove that. And I think that, um, you know, we're tough to guard because what Miles brings to the table when he's rolling and, and when he's popping, it depends on what you're going to do defensively. Um, they moved to more of a switch in that second half, but. Um, you know, we were able to attack that as well. So, um, you know, I think it's just interesting the way that teams guard sometimes. You know, sometimes they're, I mean, like today they put two on the ball, allowed Miles to kind of, you know, score. He did the same thing the first time we played them. Um, sometimes guys are in drops and then Miles gets threes. Um, sometimes they're up at the level, then Miles gets rolls. I mean, we just have adapted to really playing against everything. And that's kind of been the fun part of the ups and downs for the season, excuse me, you know, for both of us, you know, that we can, you know, kind of experiment with that. Do you have a favorite one of the 720 this season, one that stands out to you? Uh, no, I don't think so. I would say like the off the backboard lob to Obi, but the NBA doesn't count that as an assist, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. Uh, oh, that one counted. yeah, that was pretty cool. Good, good pull of sticks. Cool. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Nice players a lot about players they study from a scoring perspective. Did you study passers, any vision, anything like that? Uh, my dad just made me watch a lot of magic highlights. You know, I, I was into the internet really early. Like, I was, you know, my, I was making CDs for my dad when I was like five years old. So Of magic highlights? Well, no, 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 no of music, uh, Li using LimeWire and stuff, you know? <laughs> but I just, I, I think I'm pretty tech savvy. So I was like on YouTube pretty early watching just, my dad would just make me watch magic highlights all the time. And I always say like, I used to stay up late to watch, you know, CP and guys like that. And LeBron was my favorite player growing up. So um, those are just all guys with like high level vision. and. Um, I just love passing the ball, I guess. Does it, one more. Does it mean anything to you cross 65 games tonight? Did you ever think about that at all in the last couple of weeks? <laughs> Yippee. <laughs> I'm just I'm glad. I'm happy. Uh, no, nah, it's cool, though, because I think that, uh, you know, I think that was uh, a scary thing for us earlier in the year. Didn't know if we'd be able to make that benchmark. And I think that's just a kudos to the strength staff and our medical staff that I'm allowed to do that. And, um, yeah. Glad I got to 65. <laughs> what, uh, just obviously the bench really key in this one, especially turning around in the first, you know, mid 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 through the first quarter, just what stood out to you about them tonight? Obviously, they've been key all year, but just how impressive were they this season in particular? Yeah, the ball just pops when they play. They play a good brand of basketball. Um, they, they defend, they get the ball moving, they got guys flying around. Um, I think Shep and Obi are really two of our best, like, um, you know, two of our best guys offensively in the, in the you know, outside like the first eight seconds, they do a good job of getting off the ball, moving without the ball. Um, and I think having those two guys along with how TJ's been playing and, you know, we got Zay and Sticks, you know, interchangeable there. And I think that that really helps us. You know, those guys just really run and, um, you know, play our brand of basketball really well. We have one more here. From <coughs> I got one more. Okay. Um, obviously Miami coming up becomes a really huge one as far as standings is concerned. I just, now that you're past this one and can think about that one, just how big is that game coming up and how much you, is, you know, how do you sort of view, you know, that group coming in at this point? Big game, be ready to go. It's, uh, you know, it's nothing up time, so dudes got to be ready to go from the jump. And, um, you know, it's obviously has a lot of, you know, impact on the rest of the year. So, um, you know, if, you, if, you, uh, if you're ready to compete and, you know, if you, if you love this game, be ready to go on Sunday.